All right, guys. Welcome back to Rock Crawl and Jeep's uh, three-month update. We're uh, we're finally gonna try and get back at it. Um, we've just been really busy. You know, I, I work in motorsports. We race predominantly through the spring, summer, and fall months. Uh, winter's kind of a, a slowdown for us, so we're gonna be able to really get back at it and push hard on a lot of new upgrades on both the Overland ZJ, Purple ZJ, and Dylan's TJ. Um, and we've got a hell of a surprise for you guys today in the fact that all of this is coming out from underneath this Jeep today. Um, Overland ZJ is now one ton, Overland ZJ. Um, I managed to come into a set of 05 Plus Super Duty one tons. Uh, that's a high pinion 60 and a Sterling 10 and a half. Um, I swore up and down I'd never do it, but the opportunity has presented itself to do it on a very small budget for myself. Um, and with the help of some great partners, it's really gonna be awesome to have this um, hopefully at SEMA next year. So uh, that is my end goal. That's what we're building this to do. Um, and we're also building it to be able to just go wheel and enjoy Utah without having to worry. And as much as I love this current setup, I still worry about the ring gear and I still worry about the axle shafts, uh, especially if I get into a, a pretty tight situation where I have to get on the throttle. Um, so that said, and I'm sure we can cut back in the footage, uh, this past year at EJS, me and Dylan were on Moab Rim, and I almost flopped this thing. Like, it, it almost went over. Uh, gas, gas, gas. Um, and I feel like if I had had that extra tracked width and that slightly larger tire that we're going to run on a one ton, it would have been a non-issue. Um, especially with the ability to leave the tent up top. Um, I don't like having to take the tent on and off for wheeling or for overland or exploring. I just want to be able to leave it on and go wheel and explore and not worry about it. So I'm kind of after the best of both worlds here. So I'm going to lay it out for you. Here's what we're going to do. High pinion 60, Sterling 10 and a half, ARB air lockers front and rear, 538 gears, 37 inch Falcon MT-01s, a fresh set of 8x170 race lines, rare part steering, and a whole bunch of other goodies to go along with it. Now, the timeline is gonna be pretty tight. I got a little girl being born in like three weeks. So, I'm gone for the next two weeks racing. As soon as I get back, we're gonna get to work, cutting off all the axle brackets, and getting a set of Artec trusses welded up on those things. Uh, great news for us, Artec's in North Salt Lake. So they're about a 30 minute drive from us. We're gonna go up there, uh, hopefully film a little tour of their facility, show you guys what they're about, and uh, bring home a set of trusses and get them welded up on those Super Duty one tons, which is basically gonna make this a bolt-in upgrade. Um, you know, once you get past the welding thing and the cutting off brackets, they're bolt-in. So we've got a set of rollers, we've got everything we need. Now we just gotta take these things apart. One final drive for the old girl. Uh, we gotta head to Harbor Freight to pick up some fresh jack stands. I've only got three. Um, don't ask me how that happened, I have no idea. Either that or I'm just not gonna admit to what happened. Um, but yeah, one final drive on these stock axles. We're gonna head over to Harbor Freight, get a jack stand, and well, then these come apart, and uh, the axles go to a good buddy of mine, Jim, in uh, Colorado. He's a, a mall crawling OG. He's been wheeling and building grands for a long time. And uh, just so happens he needed this exact set of axles for his build to get it back on the road. So they're going to gym and uh, I'm going one ton. Here's my uh, pile of axles, um, also known as the side of my house. So. If anybody gets any weird ideas, I got a couple dogs as well, so don't come trying to steal my shit. But uh, Super Duty one tons. Dana 60, high pinion, Sterling 10 and a half. Um, just to give you guys an idea, I am six foot eight uh, and I have huge hands. So like the brakes on these things are massive. The, the axle shafts tucked up in here are just huge. Um, and I may try and when I pull them apart to do the gears, um, set a 60 shaft next to the Dana 30 shaft just so you can get the idea or we may just do what everybody else does google it on the internet and then hyperimpose a link right into this video um 
But this is why we're doing this. These things are absolutely massive. They're super strong. They're ultra reliable. We have a 35 spline stub out here on the hub. And I have the ability to unlock my front end now. So even though I'm gonna run an ARB air locker and my front end's gonna be unlocked, I have the ability to stop this shaft from spinning on my Jeep unnecessarily, creating driveline uh, wear and tear, as well as a loss of miles per gallon, which we own a Jeep, so let's be real, it doesn't really matter. But it is nice to be able to undo that when you've got hundreds of miles of highway driving. Um, you might see one mile per gallon, but there's a whole lot less wear and tear on the rig, and that's what I'm after. So we've got a set of terribly ugly rollers um, on here, and this is just handy for being able to get them underneath the Jeep, mock everything up, do everything we need to do. We are gonna be cutting all of this crap off. So these brackets, these brackets, all of this, to include part of this casting, actually get cut off and replaced with an Artec truss. Um, and these are the uh, these are a set of aftermarket radius arms that work on the the Fords. And I think some guys actually like adapt that over and work it. But we have a four link from Ironman 4x4 Fab, so that's what we're going to stay with. And our trusses will allow us to basically just bolt these things in. But do your homework, look it up. Um, 04 to 99 Super Duty stuff is a little weird in the fact that Ford produced what was called the Dana 50. Uh, and it's basically a 44 that looks like a 60. So be aware when you go to buy axles, 05 plus is king. Uh, me personally, I'll probably catch some hate for this. I don't buy into the hype on kingpins. Uh, I think kingpins were awesome in the early 90s, uh, mid 2000s before these things came out. But now we're at a point in time where these are out. They're affordable. Um, we only paid 600 bucks for one set of these, and then the other set was a, a trade deal. Um, these are for Purple ZJ, so I'll let that slip out. Purple ZJ is, in fact, going one ton. Overland ZJ is one ton. Maybe Dylan's Wrangler will go one ton at some point. I, we're just one ton in everything around here. Um, we've actually got a buddy of mine, Dan, that works over at Terraflex. Uh, he's got a 5.9 grand, and guess what? We're going to one ton it. So it's, uh, it's like Oprah around here. Everybody gets one tons. Um, but yeah, they're affordable. A Kingpin 60, everyone still wants $1,100, $1,200 for. Um, and on a bad day, you can find this front axle for $800 to $1,000 and the rear end for like $100. So you can get the pair pretty cheap. I don't buy into the Kingpin hype anymore. Uh, I don't believe that you should be paying something or paying that much for something that doesn't provide any increased benefit over this. And I actually think this one's better because right out of the box, I have a short 35 spline outer that is way stronger than that kingpin stuff. And I don't have to mess with kingpins. The ball joints nowadays, super, super strong. Unless you're going out and really, really beating on these things, I don't think you're going to see a difference between a ball joint and a kingpin. So we're going to do this. Uh, the steering, I do want to point this out. This is kind of cool. I'm going to walk over here. Um, get past all my crap real quick. Anybody needs a couple sets of wheels? I got some for sale. Hit me up. Get a slide into them DMs. So this is pretty cool and pretty weird in the fact that this is like a, a pass-through uniball bushing thing. I haven't taken it apart to really comprehend what's there, but we're not going to run it. So uh, happy to say that Rare Parts is going to be working with me uh, along with uh, an awesome company called RPM Steering. Uh, go check them out. Check out their Instagram. They make some really, really cool stuff, especially if you do the JKJL Gladiator thing. They've really got some cool stuff for you if you want to be going one ton and or just stay where you're at. Um, 70, 75, all the good stuff. So what we're going to be doing is rare parts, um, forged tie rod ends uh, from their Fab Series steering with, uh, I believe we're going to run GM one ton cartridges. Um, and then we're going to run a Reed Racing Knuckle on our passenger side to get what we need out of that. And we're going to run 70, 75 aluminum uh, tie rod and drag link from Iron Man 4x4 Fab. They're going to machine that up for us, and that's what we're going to be running. So there's going to be a little bit of bling on these. It's going to be pretty rad, but let's uh, let's head inside. I'm going to show you guys just a couple more things about what we're going to do for this steering. So this is the last piece of our steering. Um, and what you'll see here, I want you to pick up on that, is this is a Rare Parts Fab Series uh, tie rod end. And you'll notice there's no tie rod. Well, that's because they can send you just a cartridge and you can replace just the cartridge if you ever wear out your stuff or you have an issue or you're a racer and you break stuff and things like that. 
So you can just carry a cartridge with you, thread it in, thread it out, boom, you're done. So we're gonna use these with our one ton steering and our aluminum 7075. Here's our offsets to kick out the tie rod, do everything we need to do, left and right hand threaded. And you'll notice the hole is not perfectly symmetrical there. And that's done on purpose for clearance issues. You know, you don't wanna have this massive chunk of metal right next to all your stuff. So they offset it intentionally while giving you as much material, uh, material as possible to maintain strength. So these things are awesome. Huge thanks to Rare Parts for uh, continuing to work with us and provide some awesome parts. But uh, now we gotta take this thing apart. So let's, uh, let's hop to it. So one of the perks of having long arms here is that uh, I don't have to use a coil spring compressor and this doesn't have to get awkward. So the way that I'm doing this, I'm setting the Jeep just like this one on jack stands, on the pinch seams, or in my case, on my rock sliders, um, just to hold it until I can come back from this next race, weld up the trusses on the 60 and the uh, Sterling, and roll those right back underneath here. So this is just a temporary thing so I can get my buddy his axles uh, and then have this thing ready to go. So we've unseated the coil springs with a high lift. Uh, yeah, it's kind of sketchy. Uh, I don't recommend like fully trusting it, which is why we still got tires and everything on it. Uh, be safe, don't, don't die trying to do this crap. Um, this is just a quick, easy way for us to be able to get these coil springs out. So let's see if we can't just get it out. Got it. So now we're going to go to the back and I'm going to crawl my happy ass underneath there and try and do that. Also, shout out to WTD. Thanks for keeping my hands safe. So we've got our shocks disconnected, our coil springs out. Now we're disconnecting these uh, rear lower links. Up next, we've got our e-brake cables. We'll undo those up there because those go with the axle and uh, some upper links and a drive shaft. Rear's out. So we're, uh, we're moving pretty quickly on this and we'll uh, catch up with you guys in just a minute. We used our line wrenches and uh, we got our Brake lines off. And now we're just undoing the final bits and the rear axle is ready to come out. Now you do want to be careful with brake fluid because it does eat paint, but uh, it's just dripping on the axle for now. So not a huge issue. Um, personally, I like to take a rubber glove, slide it over, and then put a zip tie on it. And that just keeps crap from being able to get inside that line and that fitting. Back end's basically done. We've got the brake lines disconnected, the long arms unhooked, shocks unhooked, e-brakes unhooked. Everything's unhooked. So, she's, uh, she's pretty well ready to come out. We just hooked a ratchet strap from side to side on the unibody. Um, and that's holding up all of our control arms and drive shaft and stuff like that, just so it's not sitting there dangling. Um, so let's see if we can't get this thing to come out. So on here, that's our Iron Man 4x4 Fab Truss. Um, I don't know exactly what we're gonna do on the rear. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be an Artec kit. Uh, if not, we'll go back to Iron Man, but 90% sure it's going to be our tech just because it's everything. It's lower control arm mounts, it's coil buckets, it's it's got it all. So, and it's uh it's basically like a little adult jigsaw puzzle. Punch it all together, weld it up, bolts right in. So, this one's uh ready to go to its new home in Colorado. So we're gonna drag it out and then we're gonna take the front out. Uh, not much is really different from the rear in like how you get the long arms off. There's some tips and tricks with wrenches, putting it behind the bolt with a washer and you can kind of pull it out while you're using an impact on it. Uh, different things like that. We've got our uppers disconnected, our lowers disconnected. 
we went ahead and disconnected the uh, drag link off of the pitman arm here easiest way to do that is uh, go ahead and undo the top and just leave a couple of threads on the nut and then take a, a like a mini sledge like I've got there and smack the crap out of the side of the pitman arm a few times she'll fall right out you don't have to fight it uh, a lot of people like to try and hit the top of it and all that other crap you don't need to smack the side of it a few times nice and easy falls right out shouldn't have any issues um, so we're almost there like we're we got an airline to disconnect, some brake lines to disconnect, and uh, my Ironman 4x4 Fab track bar to disconnect. And once that's done, we're we're done too. You know, we're we're not going to weld on trusses and stuff today, unfortunately, because uh, I don't have them yet. But it's taking every ounce of self control to not go get the Dana the Dana 60 and the Sterling and just roll them underneath here so I could see what it looked like. But that's a lot of heavy lifting and more heavy lifting than we feel like doing today. So that's just going to have to wait a few weeks. But uh, I can't say I'm stoked to see a hover jeep again, but I'm pretty stoked to see a hover jeep again. It's we have two hover jeeps now. Yeah, purple jeep's been a hover jeep for like six months, <laughs> at least. Um, the good news is I have everything I need. Uh, pretty much everything's either ordered or incoming for the one ton swap. Um, so it's not like we're gonna have a bunch of delays other than my spare time, um, which is about to get even more limited than normal. So yay. But uh, we're going to make some time. We're going to make it a point to have this thing one tonned and out of the garage by spring. Um, and we're going to hit EJS. We're going to try and hit Southern Utah. We're going to try and hit every event we possibly can uh, within my you know personal and financial limitations this year with this thing. Um, just to show everybody but what's possible with a Grand Cherokee platform, uh, I've been wheeling and building these things for 10 years. Uh, I'm not new to this platform. I'm not new to changing axles on this platform. Uh, my last one, maybe we'll, we'll get an old photo of it, pop it in this video, was a high pinion 44 and a nine inch like seven years ago uh, in a Grand Cherokee running Ironman 4x4 Fab long arms with a Clayton subframe and a 113 inch wheelbase. It was all stretched out and had a roll cage in it. And it was a point and shoot, almost a early rock bouncer kind of deal. Uh, and I did break the nine inch like four times. So. That's why I'm not going to nine inch. I'm not like going to a 44 and a nine, you know, kind of finding that happy middle ground. Uh, I found it before and I broke it a lot. So I'm gonna just go straight to one ton, not worry about anything, skip the middle step. For anybody thinking about doing like that 44 and nine inch combo thing, don't waste your time. Uh, as a person that's spent the money, put lockers in them, built them, welded them, trussed them, fixed them, broke them, you know, fixed them again, it's a huge waste of time. Um, I was on a 35 inch tire wheeling in the Southeast in North Carolina. And I don't think I had a single trip where I didn't break the nine inch or I didn't break at least a hub on the 44. Um, I was running Yukon shafts, uh, with Yukon super joints. Um, I mean, it was, it was a solidly built axle up front with a, uh, a lock right locker and the rear was a spooled non nodular all stock nine inch. Now there's a lot of people that say, well, if you go to a nodular and you go to 35 splines and you go to this and you go to that, and you spend gobs of money and basically make a nine inch, a one ton sheet metal axle. It's just as good as a one ton. Or I can spend 150 bucks and get a Sterling 10 and a 10 and a half and have something just as strong. That's the same bolt pattern, the same WMS, it doesn't require a bunch of work. So to me, nine inches are just garbage for my purposes. Maybe they're good for yours. Um, but as a person that's done that, I strongly advise just skip the middle ground, go straight from stock axles to one tons and be happy. Granted, we're only gonna run a 37. Uh, we may go to a 40, but on these Grand Cherokees, you have to remove a lot more sheet metal. Uh, and we're even talking about removing the rest of this just for 37s. Like we're gonna have to come in here and roll this and trim it out and bring that line down right there on my bumper just for 37s. Uh, 40s are even more drastic. Um, but again, this is an Overland build. So we just want reliability and moving to one tons means we gotta move to a 37 just to get the pumpkin that much higher off the ground. So we're gonna get this pulled out and we'll talk to you guys in a minute. Hover Jeep wants more. I feel like I've been here in this garage at least once with this Jeep. It's cause I have. Um, so I, I don't know if everyone knows the story on this, but I got it a couple of years ago from my dad who just kind of fell out of love with the project and having it around. Uh, so I took it back and started building it, put those axles in it, built them up, did all that crap. And, uh, was just never really stoked on having to worry about shafts and stuff. So 
We're going to the one ton setup. Um, I think this is about as good as you can get for factory axles. Like, I don't think, I don't think you can do any better. Um, the only thing would be going to a high pinion front. Um, this is a low pinion, but it's a low pinion. And I don't know if you can see it, but maybe, maybe we'll throw in a little clip of it. But it's sleeved. It's gusseted. It's got the best ball joints on the market. Like, you can beat on those things in Baja 1000 for 1,000 miles and not have a failure. Uh, Kevin Cox over at Ironman has broken, like, three WJ knuckles and is still running the same ball joints. Like, you just can't get any better than that in, in terms of reliability and performance related to cost. Um, so... This has been a phenomenal setup for me. Um, I'm stoked to see it go to a friend that's going to put it to use, wheeling it all over Moab and Colorado and things like that. So uh, I'm very happy that they're going to a good home, but I'm very stoked to say that this rig is going one ton. So it's uh, it's been a dream for a long time to have a one ton ZJ, and now I'm going to have a one ton ZJ. So as always, thanks for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, tell me what you love. Tell me what you hate. I don't care. Um, you know, tell us what you want to see, what you're stoked about, what you're not stoked about. Tell me I'm an idiot for uh, not liking nine inches. I don't care. Uh, I think they suck. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.